everyone, in this message you're about to listen to, Apostle Joshua Selman emphasizes on people spending time to develop their mind much more than their physical body. He explained that many people go about giving more to their body and their mind is empty. This message will bless you as you take a different disposition to developing your mind. Your body is the final revealer of the quality. The, your body is the final revealer of the quality of your spirit and the quality of your mind. That means your body, it is in the physical realm. And through your body, the quality of your spirit man, the quality of your mindset, the quality of your transformation is ultimately revealed through your body or the physical realm, if you want to put it that way. Now, please look up. The reason why there is such emphasis on the body is because the body is the final revealer. Let me give you an instance. So, here is a gentleman coming from a village what do you call poverty poverty we know largely is the mind but there are indices physical indices that show the person is poor are we together insufficiency the body is most likely not in a health condition that is desirable now a few years later that gentleman becomes buoyant financially you now say the person is wealthy what exactly changed the mind changed but to a layman you do not know that the miracle happened here what he uses to know that the person's life has changed is now the presence of a car am i right the presence of a house maybe the presence of what you call a good life so the body is very important because it is the final revealer of the quality of your spirit and the quality of your transformation eventually we should see the god life flowing to your body through your health through the quality of your life and everything physical that is around you so it starts from the spirit it flows to your mind but then it should happen in your body and i hope you know that the final salvation of the body will happen at the resurrection that's what the bible teaches where mortality will swallow up immortality and the reason why that will happen is not because it was the will of god that that is the final time it will happen that our rate of transformation is largely too slow a man's lifetime becomes so small for mortality to swallow up immortality but that that possibility is here and now that men can attain to that state where their body does not die it's in scripture Jesus looks at the disciples and said, not all of you will taste death. And they were angry. So what does that mean? So who is the person? Let's know who will be alive now and who will die. And Jesus just shut the issue quietly. But it's true. A few people came close to it uh, in the Bible, even though they later died. Chiefest among them in the New Testament was John the Beloved. He was the final apostle who nobody could. He died a natural death. He could not. He literally dominated over Matthiadom. It's not that they did not try. Bible history will tell us, are we together now? That they tried to do every kind of thing that they could do. They poured, they put him inside hot oil, put him inside whatever. He came out of the oil. Imagine you are trying to roast fish or fry fish and you put it inside oil and it comes out without dying. Or without, um, without frying. Would you run away? Immortality. That man's body had been so transformed. Something about the reality of the spirit life had gained dominance that the elemental forces had no power over him again. They did not know what to do with him. When a man refuses to die, there's nothing you can do again. Are we together? Because the last enemy to be destroyed in the world of men in experience is death. Every man can be immune to any other thing, but the moment you conquer death, nothing can be done. That is why the boldest man on earth is the man who does not fear death. The boldest man on earth is not the one who fights lions. and fight. Once you cannot fear death, there is nothing men can do with you again. Why do we salute military people? Because by reason of their training, they have been trained to see death as a passage. And so they will boldly step into all kinds of camps of the enemy and shoot you go and try it 
I know you are a Christian. You, are, you can go with your Bible even. Go with a bottle of oil. Are we together? The hearts of men fail them when they are about to dare death. Is the reason why the zenith of Jesus' victory was his, his victory over the grave, death, over Satan, over sin, all of these elements. When he rose again, is the reason why if you do not believe in the resurrection, you've not believed in the complete gospel. It was, a, it was largely the problem between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The dividing line was the reality of the resurrection. Is someone learning? Of these three dimensions I wrote here, the most important as far as your excelling in the earth is concerned is your mind. Please write. Of these three dimensions, spirit, soul, and body, the most important as far as your excelling on the earth is concerned is your mind. This is very important. First Corinthians chapter 6. Let's read 19 and 20. Using Amplified, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. It says, do you not know that your body, watch this, is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? It says, whom you have received as a gift from God, you are not your own. Verse 20, it says you were bought with a price, purchased with a precious, with preciousness and paid for. It says, so then honor God, bring glory to him in your body. My apologies, I'm reading on the body. Still write that scripture for body. Add that scripture for body. I wrote it to buttress on the value of your body. So back to our discussion of these three dimensions, the most important is your mind that means the most important aspect of your salvation after the initial salvation to your spirit is renewal and transformation please write it down renewal and transformation renewal and transformation your mind is very very important listen to me your decisions and your actions are products of your level of renewal and transformation your decisions and your actions and i'll be talking a bit about that your decisions and your actions are products or dependent on your level of renewal and level of transformation if you're with me say amen that means making decisions and actions is not the issue the issue is the lens and the basis if your decisions and your actions are coming from a mind that is not renewed, a mind that is not transformed, your decisions and actions will consistently lead you against the will of God, lead you to a life of defeat. Are we together? You will be reading a lot of scriptures that attest to the fact that the believer is a victor in Christ. The believer has been called to a life of victory. But you may never enter the experience of it, not because you are not acting, not because you are not making decisions, but your decisions are very inferior thanks to the lack of transformation within your mind. Are we together now? So what makes a great preacher? Yes, the anointing comes upon the person, but what makes a great preacher is your level of renewal and transformation. What makes a great businessman? Your level of renewal and transformation. What makes a great father, a great mother? It's not your tribe. It's not where you come from. It is your level of renewal and transformation. What makes a great career person? Your level of renewal and transformation. Are we together now? So what then, by this definition, if you are, God forbid, if you are an evil spirit, what part of a man's life would you be interested in? Talk to me. One more time. Excellent students. Your mind. If you are the devil and you cannot do anything about the spirit of that man, the next part of call, it will be a waste to waste your time around the body, knowing that the body is simply an executor. Are we together? Decisions are not made bodily. The, act is, the body is only an instrument of execution.